<laughs> so uh back to Kevin and KDS and, and Blurred Station. How did KDS come about? How what was the, the inception, the birth? Um, so me and Dion, uh, after Hasbro, we kind of started bouncing around doing our own thing, and Dion moved out to California. And we were still kind of working on our own little projects, but we made our way into doing decks for people like producers. Um, so, there, so there's this big barrier that every creator knows about. You know, there are like three or four real barriers to like getting your stuff out there. And so we were facing those same barriers. You know, one, of course, is money. But the other one is once you've got a project, project in your hand is how do you get it to people? How do you get it into that room, you know, into the room where they make the decisions, the green light room, that area? And that's a barrier if you don't have representation and stuff like that. So what we figured was, and, you know, we were doing decks for producers out there you know, for people from all kinds of different studios. And it's, we just decided one day, let, let's try something different. Instead of taking the money from these executives who are these, these, these producers and what have you, let's, let's say, okay, we'll do the deck for you. But instead of paying us, walk us into the room or come aboard our next property. You know, we've got some other properties and, and, and let's strategically partner. Let's be, let's be partners on this thing. And so that sounded good to a couple of, of guys who were up and coming who are now some players. And they took us into the room. You know, they got us in front of like some studios and some some of those players who could get you into those rooms with the studios and with uh, and we, we were able to start pitching, you know, to distributors. And so we kind of kind of came together organically that way as KDS Entertainment. And we started building out our partnerships and our strategic partnerships with some real names that we have a chance to work with. You know, we got studio partners, like one of the oldest Hollywood studios uh, in existence, Gamal Television. They, uh, Gamal, the guys who do Narcos, they were our first option. They optioned our first shows. So um, really, really cool. And then from there, we just kind of started really cranking it up. We, you know, you gotta have content, you know, you gotta have content, but content is not really king. king. We say that content is king, content is king. This is what led, led the Blur Station. Content, KDS was doing content. We had content all over the place, but there were so many other barriers than just having, you know, really great content and being able to pitch it. We're in rooms where we're pitching black properties and there are no black people. There are no black executives. There are, there are no people that look like us who, and when we, we were on development on some properties and they didn't understand why we were thinking the way we were thinking about how to develop these shows because we were the only black people in the room. They didn't even understand what code switching was. Mm -hmm. So we learned the hard way that there's more, there are more barriers than just not having the money to get it done or even not being able to get into the room. But when you get there, um, who are you in that space? You know, how, how are you represented in terms of as a creator in that space and, and how do they take you seriously? Do they take, your stories actually seriously because they they think they understand what's acceptably black in terms of tv and film and entertainment and that's what they're shooting for that acceptably blackness uh but that that wasn't what we wanted you know mm -hmm. that wasn't what we wanted we wanted to tell some stories uh that we understood that spoke to us uh, i can't tell you guys how many times i use the word authenticity in development with a room full of they were nice Nap people. But... Napkin Americans. This... Uh, <laughs> the the non-melanated. The non-melanated. Price Gate Warriors. The they Night did. Demons. The Bleach. The Mayo oh, Sapiens. Yeah. 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 Mayo Sapiens. Yeah. Uh, okay. it, so, so the we... Ashen. Yeah. <laughs> the recipients of chairs. <laughs> that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Colonization the default. <laughs> the default. <laughs> Specialists at colonization. Anyway, uh, it was uh, it was one of those kinds of things where it, it, it became this organic thing. We had to make some decisions. You know, do we want to keep doing this this two step, or do we want to try to answer some of the, some of the questions in terms of the problems that we're facing? And not just us, but we have so many really really good friends and you know great creators and in the creative community that's our circle. Not to mention the ones that are all that I'm meeting, like like Blurred's Eye View, and so they're facing the same things. And, and so KBS kind of like organically led to Blurred Station. You know, 
our success with KBS kept pushing us to Blur Station. So here, here, here we are. Here, here we are with Blur Station. Yeah. So Blur Station, uh, which I've announced at the beginning of the show that we're proudly a, a members of now and a, a affinity members, press corps. Uh, I'm running the voice acting division. <laughs> you know, I'm going to find yeah. out. And, you know, and so there's a lot of things that's coming up, you know, and there's a lot of projects that have very great promise, number one, um, to see that this is a, a, a place where if you have a project that you're working on, if there's a show of any type of uh, uh, a genre dealing with, you know, horror or uh, a speculative fiction, adventure, you name it, comics even, you know, this is, a, and you're a person of color, this is the place you need to be, you know, mm -hmm. especially when you are trying to figure out how can I get this project out there? How can I get something that I'm building or writing or want to shoot out into the atmosphere yeah um <laughs> opportunity that was what really important for us you know opportunity is also a barrier you know that that a lot so many creators run into i mean because honestly it's it's not it's it's a distributor's world it's it's not uh, it's it's their it's it's their business model that makes them the, the 500 pound gorilla they're mm -hmm. the ones you know, because there are so many creators, but there are so few really monetized distribution models out there, platforms out there. I mean, everybody's in line trying to get their stuff onto those same four or five platforms. And, mm -hmm. and, and of course, network television. And then, of course, some cable television. But there are only so many shows that happen. There's only so much anime that gets done every year. There are only so many slots. And we are generally not centered in those, in those projects. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we're hero support. We're the guys, you know, that you'll see. I just saw where Carrie Washington uh, was being interviewed, and she said that she had gotten tired of being uh, the white, uh, the white protagonist's best friend. That was her. Mm -hmm. That's what she had mm -hmm. been Last for year. years. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody always at the center. Who's the, the little little Caucasian girl who uh, who the whole kingdom is depending on? You know, you've seen that uh, a, a zillion times in the fantasy mm -hmm. world. Of course, you got to protect the little empress and the princess. Um, where's the, where's the little sister who who all the knights will go and die for in the fantasy world? Where, where's she? Yeah. At? You know, where where's the where's the little girl who's mm -hmm. as smart as Tony Stark is, but she's hiding in the ghetto? You know, uh, mm -hmm. hiding her brilliance. Mm -hmm. It's funny we were pitching <laughs> guys too. So we were pitching one of those one of our shows with that character. And we said, well, she's the smartest person in the world. And the, the white executive stopped us and said, no, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Why does that, that not surprise me? Oh, wow. I don't, I don't, Excuse me? Word? Uh, what? what? Well, why would she be in the ghetto if she's the smartest person in the world? Oh, that... my God. All and right. There, you know and there's the, and there's the disconnect. <laughs> right. Exactly. There's the disconnect. We, we that is what we call not living the opportunity. Like, I don't get that. Yeah. yeah, that was one of those reality checks for us in development where we were like, okay, uh, no, we're, we're willing to say that she's one of the top nines in the world, but not the smartest. I was like, but if she was Tony, you know, nine year old Tony Stark, that wouldn't be a problem. Well, that makes sense. Like, oh, okay. Okay. I'm going to need. I'm gonna I'm I'm be quiet. No. <laughs> so, Wait a minute. Nah, I'm a, I'm a, nah, Captain, nah, I'm, Captain, I'm a, Captain says you can nah, fire him. Nah, we're we gonna, we gonna, gonna, we gonna, gonna lose some subscribers just because <laughs> radicalism <laughs> is a little it's a little bit too early in the night. <laughs> a couple more glasses of wine, I might get loose. But yeah, no, nah, on the strength of everything, that motherfucker right there. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mm -mm. She's, yeah. In other words, Lady Mandalore is, is on Tombstone vibes right now. She's like, oh, um... No. <laughs> it's scorched earth. Yeah. So we guys... Wow. We, um, we just shook her head. We're like, hey, get her on the ship. Let's go. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really... Um, it's, it's a... I mean, one of the things we learned is when you see these properties that are Black-themed or Black-centric properties out there, remember, they've gone through a whole lot of vetting to determine whether they are acceptably black or not so mm -hmm. that you know we when we were pitching i think we pitched to only in all the pitches we've done we've only pitched to one person of color period 
mm-hmm. all the pictures that we've done. And that was a, a beautiful young lady. She was an Asian lady, but not one black person took. Well, one, one. And that was um, shout out to Delise James at uh, Judge Mathis. We love you, Delise. Wow. All right. Uh, oh, one, one in our entire yeah. career. One. So we, we couldn't, we, we knew we couldn't thrive in that space. Not the way we wanted to. So and see, and that, like like you saying, Demetrius, it's one, and we need more, right? Which which is pro- which is why Blur Station and KDS's entertainment is important for us, you know. And Go just ahead. to give perspective, how long have you been doing this, sir? Um, so KDS Entertainment is five years now, but my Your career, career my career stretches back almost twenty. See. Not that. Mm-hmm. Wait, what are we? <laughs> Wait, mm. not you talking about the, the year two thousand having to do and do it. No, <laughs> okay. the word she said. It still yes. has one. <laughs> yeah, I, I started. Yeah. I was writing in, you know, trying to get into the right that writing space for you know right out of high school and college, and that was really hard. It was really, 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 really hard for uh, black comic creators who were not independent to try to get into those spaces for a very long time. Because you know the demographic for you know, for basically for comics for very, very many years, the one, the only one that they paid attention to was the white males from 14 to, to 39. That was the only real demographic they cared about for comics. One that they were angling for, and those were the writers, you know, so they, they were perfectly happy to have anybody write for comic characters of color. You know, of course, Sweet Christmas, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, I got, I kind of got in trouble when I called him on the carpet for that. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now you get to create your own carpets and say the same thing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I was like, like, talking about a convention, I was like, no Negro has ever seen Sweet Christmas. <laughs> like, say, what, say what you really wanted to say. Right, hold up. I mean, hold up. you know, there's things, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> there, there are things. Yeah, so, jeez. Sure. <laughs> yes. The yeah. Wayne Duffy is, uh, this is why. And I'm glad he mentioned the way McDuffie. Um, it's it's the reason why Milestone Comics exists, or Milestone Media, which is not what is now known as. Mm-hmm. And even when it in its inception, when it was in its first infancy, seeing those stories being told, they weren't ready. They no, it- they, they there was covers, they weren't ready. The mm-hmm. the general public wasn't ready, but us as the community. We were like, Let's go. What, yeah, mm-hmm. what's what's wrong with that? Yeah, you, you know, I was about escapism, and it still is. But even now, in the in its current run, it's touching on issues. It's you know, and and they're talking about things that matter. And there's just there it is. Yep, he knows. Demetrius knows what I'm talking about. Blood Syndicate. It's it's That's all there. Absolutely, yep. it's all there. So. We just need that. We need stuff like Blurred Station. We need those products. Like, there's a project you're currently working on with uh, Jarrell Patton. Oh, yeah. The Undead Horizon. Fantastic show concept. Fantastic show concept. Actually, the first show, uh, live action show that was not a KDS show uh, that we got first right of refusal on with Jarrell Patton. And his incredible daughter Dakota. Okay, so this is a six-year-old child. Now, when this I was is, six, I was eating, I was eating paste, and <laughs> <laughs> the stuff I was doing at six years old was just. This child yeah. is doing Hollywood-level makeup. She's a genius, and she's been doing it since she was four years old. And you know, of course, she's doing it on her dad and, or and her sisters, but it's just it's so dope and so. Jarrell created a, a, a show concept, an IP, uh, based on some of the concepts that she had put together for zombies and what have you. But the, but it was so cool. I was like, yeah, we, we got to grab these guys because what's going to happen is somebody going to somebody's going to grab them. I, I, I know that for sure. So we grabbed we grabbed them and offered them a first right of refusal. And they jumped on board. And so the show's in development and we want to get that show out there. It is you know, it is a fantastic show concept. So they signed a board and they're uh, affiliates as well. And we are trying to get people 
to support them so that this show can get done. Because that's where we're at, guys. I mean, it's not the content, you know? The content is there, it's distribution. Distribution is king. So we can stay with the metaphor of, you know, the chessboard. Everybody wants to be the queen. Everybody, everyone, everybody thinks, you know, the queen is so dangerous, but the queen is only dangerous when the king is secure. And so that's how I see, that's how I see distribution and content. Con distribution is the king. You got to have distribution or you're out there trying to sell your content, you know, at dollar stores in front of Kroger or something like that. You can, you can build this incredible content and all of the distribution partners that you want will tell, might tell you, no, nah, we don't like it. Then what do you do? You know, where do you go? You're, you, you got to go independent. You have to figure out how to monetize it. But if you've got distribution locked in in a space where you can monetize your stuff and with an audience, you know, that's already built in that get a chance to view it and get a chance to share it and get a chance uh, and get a chance to comment on it with with press who are reviewing it and talking about it in one space and you get the opportunity um, you being black is not a disadvantage. It's in fact an opportunity because now we know that you know how to center your, your characters and we know that you can write from a place or you can create from a place of real authenticity about who we are, our stories, our experiences. Now that's a plus for you as a creator as opposed to it being a barrier, a challenge. Uh, when you have a space like, uh, like Blur Station, when you have that, when you have distribution, then the creator, the queen can run crazy when the king is secure. She can run all over the board, just tripping all over people, kicking them in the face, doing all <laughs> kinds of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> distribution is content is queen. Uh, so that's something that I think that, that Blur Station addresses. And we try to go with the whole spectrum, but we've got to get people on board. You know, mm -hmm. we've got to get people. We've got to start talking like televangelists. You know, we need yeah. you. <laughs> yes. You know, yeah. we need you. To oh, you got to, you got to hit them. You got to hit Take this holy water and just, Come on. just sprinkle it on you. <laughs> you, you we need you. We can't do it without you. You know what? Everybody watch Dragon Ball. Come on. Let's not play. <laughs> what, what did Goku say? He said, lend me your energy. Come on, son. For this spirit bomb, you I don't know. just watched that this morning. We need I'm you. <laughs> Will it's... feels it in his fingers. Come on. <laughs> it's feeling it in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna we say, need, pass the plate. We need the care bear still. We care need the care bear. bear. <laughs> 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 the care bears. <laughs> <laughs> the us your energy. No, it's in all seriousness. It's it's a great thing, and I'm we're glad to be a part of it. And it's just something that needs to be done because I can't tell you how many times we've heard the conversation or heard a gripe about we don't see enough of us. We don't see enough of us on screen. We don't see enough of us in in a book. We don't see we don't see us. Period. And they're, they're, if you don't do something, you're always going to complain about it. And this is why it has to be done. It has to be done. And I mean, look at look at, and I can't help but keep bringing it up. But look at the success that the Blackening brought. Look at the success of Black Panther. You know, uh, Blackening cost what five million to make, made fifteen. Yeah, they I, they know it's it, there. That, yeah. That's the key. They know that we will come out and spend our money on properties that are centering us. They know it. Mm -hmm. uh, we, in our presentation, we cite a number of articles that show that there, that Hollywood passes on $10 billion a year rather than adding black folk at the center of just some of the stuff, you know, a, a higher percentage of, of the things. And shout out to, shout out to uh, Hellspawn, to Demetrius, you know, uh, Demetrius Holt. That brother will take these statistics, there is no blur station without Hellspawn playing, period. You know, without Demetrius doing what he's doing, without him grabbing a hold of this message and driving it home and being the boots on the ground and working like a, and more importantly, even than that, being that first person that jumped from the community that jumped into the pool with us. 
he jumped in and he brought all his credibility with him. And I brother got to give him, I got to give him his flowers because credibility has also been one of our issues that we're facing. I mean, mm-hmm. I know with the blur community, you guys are incredible creators. The blur community is way deeper than I thought. It is so deep. It is so dope. It is way better. Demetrius and Blurred's Eye View and, and, uh, and Lonzo Star and Brian Wycliffe at, 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 uh, at Wingless and Montrez and all these incredible, incredible creators. Y'all, it's Chauncey Dickens. It's, y'all are just we are dope. The, we're the underground, man. We, man, we are is, the underground. It is, a, it is an underground <laughs> full of gold. I mean, it is crazy gold. It's where all the good stuff is at, too. You it know, is. so it's, <laughs> It is, uh, you know, and then of course the people who've, who've broken through who are on our side, like Phil Butte at uh, at Nine B. You know, shout out to Nine B. Nine B is just just dope. They will, they are bringing it, you know, and so they represent that evolution, that next step for people that I'm creating, you know, creating with, and Blur Station is going to give, you know, a stage to, um, but. The blur community has been sold a bunch of snake oil and, and for so long that what we're experiencing is, you know, a certain kind of reticence of, mm-hmm. of to jump in, you know, and we don't want that to keep people from taking and, and getting some of the benefits that blur station is offering. We're not just asking people, you know, we're not Tyler Perrying and it's great to have black owned and, and Byron Allen. Great to have black owned. Great, great. But we want to give some of that ownership to the people who participate, you know, Tyler ain't giving y'all no ownership. He ain't cough. Cough. Have a cough. Oh. Oh, oh no. a little truth. A little glitch. A little bit truth. I need a I want that big there. ass videos too. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why we but we bill ourselves as new black Hollywood. You know, well, because old black Hollywood. They're they're dancing to that same tune. They're acting like Hollywood. You know, we want to move into this other space where, you know, we have the power to green light our own thing. I love Shonda. And for her $350 million that she got from Netflix, she still got a pitch to Netflix. Yeah. They still got to say yes or no. I'm sorry, people. what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He, he mentions. I, that's crazy. Okay. There was. Okay. I, there was a time, and I'm glad you brought all of this up because there was a time during the late '80s, early '90s, Robert Townsend and Keenan Ivory Wayans and that entire crew—they were actually making moves. They were like the new black yeah, Rat Pack. They were, mm-hmm. they were like there. There's group. There's a group of people that came out of that camp that made major differences, but look where they had to make those differences at and you know and they got shut down they did they got shut down so now here we are um 10 years later and we're 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 trying a different method we we know we got the content that ain't the issue (laughs) the issue is not what we can think of we we have tons of 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 ideas the issue is how do we get it out there? And like you mentioned, the distribution, and that was the key is to get it out there. And now you look at now it's needing the support. And like you said, the blur community has been fed snake, snake oil. You know there is that hesitancy, and you know and they don't they're not sure like uh, how do we do that? So putting people like myself and and the rest of the crew and and Hellspawn and Nick's over at Do You Speak Geek and and Nine B these guys being attached to this thing saying hey yo if we trust it. Shout out to Crazy Eight and Candy B. Absolutely, you know, because and those are my people. When I said, "Oh, mm-hmm. well, they're in it," and Demetrius, I'm sold. <laughs> I said, oh, "I'm like, sold." Look, look, that's the we don't do bullshit crew. Like, yeah. all, if you need, <laughs> if you have any that's concerns me. or qualms, that's the receipt kings and queens right yeah. there. And uh, when I was like, I'm like, "Oh, these are my people already." Yeah. I already know. I, I just sign me up. Let's let's do it. You know yeah. and knowing that they're a part of something and now that we're a part of something that's out here trying to make this difference will make this difference <clears throat> we phrase <laughs> and and it's so it's it's really so cool because you mentioned brandy and, and crazy eight these guys came you know they were they were recommended to us and we sat down and the stuff they were pitching was just off the charts you know i've, I've been pitching for years 
And this stuff is right here in the community. I mean, I grabbed you know, Brandy. She she hit us with one of the projects. If I do one project for Blurred Station, it's going to be Brandy's project. Mm-hmm. If I only get a chance to do one, it's got to be that one because it's game changing. The one that she she pitched. But then eight comes along and he understands that there's this other layer here. There for <laughs> artists, the music. All of our projects need music. All of them. You know, have you guys ever listened? Have you ever watched those videos where they show the video or show the clip with the music and without the music? You guys ever watched mm-hmm. those? Yeah. yeah. It, it just, it's, it's just horrific. So every project that we're doing is going to have music associated with it. Hence, we want to build a stable of musicians from the blurred community, from the nerdcore community, from the black musician community. That's stable. And we have made a commitment to only use those guys for year one on all of our projects that we're going to be doing, all our scripted. So we want the opportunities are, are there. I mean, we just have to get this thing built. That's all. We just got to get it built. And when we have it built, we'll have a platform, we'll have an audience, we'll have production dollars, and we'll have distribution. Uh, on top of that, we'll have marketing, we'll have press. Uh, it's all there. The, the plan is solid. And um, our job now is to deliver. It, it, the only way I can see around getting around that whole snake oil trauma is deliver. You know, do what we say we're going to do. Be who we say we are. If we can deliver, oh, all of it changes then because, you know, everybody can look backwards and go, I wish I, I wish I'd have bought some stock in such and such, you know, well, <laughs> this is it. This is this is the moment. <laughs> Don't worry, Demetrius. All Tafari had to do was throw it out there. Trust me. Uh, give me give me till the end of the show. <laughs> 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 Cause he, so, uh, and I say, I say that for this reason, uh, me and Kevin, when we first started, you know, discussing how Blurred's Eye View was going to come on board and everything else. And he was pitching an idea to me. He was telling me about a, one of these projects that they were working on. And he was like, it's this anthology series, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And, and they couldn't think of a name. And I just said, call it this, but spell it this way. And first he was just like, that's good. Uh, <laughs> it don't take me long. It really don't. And it, the brain just doesn't shut off. It, and nor do I want it to. And because I, I just don't. I don't need it to shut off. It's like it's just part of my part of my issue. Uh, <laughs> it yes, works. So, so, so go ahead. Go ahead. I, I I have a question. So I'm yeah. trying to think as somebody that that hasn't been sold on this yet. It's it's coming from a place of, of trying to be as honest and transparent for Blurred Station and for us as possible because I'm all about trust. What, when, number one, when do you expect to have the streaming platform up for people to start watching things on? So the way our plan works right now, we're in round one. Round one is our first funding round. Um, now, to be clear, we don't have the same kind of equity funding rounds that you'll see for groups like Fanbase and for Legion M and for some who shall be nameless, some other groups shall be nameless. I'll um, put it in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is why she's I'll my put, second. Ag- when, when she knows I have to holster the weapon, <laughs> she goes ahead and pulls it. Those, those who shall mm-hmm. not be named. Oh, it's, oh, it's going to be said. Oh yeah, not by us, but it's gonna be said. She's like, she's I'm more fine. like, she's more like Lady Mandalore is like, don't worry, Captain, I got it. I, even... I got it. I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> she likes to fight. <laughs> in our in our funding round, for the way we're doing this, it's it's we what we need is we need participation, just like everybody else in a certain way. Um, but right now, it's all everything that we're doing is contingent on whether or not and how far we get in terms of subscriptions. You know, so. The goal is to reach our subscription levels and then go right from the end of October ish into pre-production for a bunch of stuff. And that's that's the real the real issue. When you're really moving forward to do this stuff, you march through pre-production, development, the whole nine yards. You get it, you get through it. And when you're doing when you're really doing it, there's a trail of breadcrumbs that you can show that you're doing it. You know, it's not just mm-hmm. not just talking, it's showing 
and telling. So what we what we plan on doing is as we start getting into production, we want to launch the platform in January. The question is how much content will we have at that exact moment when we launch? Right. But we're doing a number of things that we'll be able to start dropping content for. We have an entire comic series that we want to make sure that our, that's on the uh, on the platform. And the comics specifically point to the universes of the live action and animated properties that are coming. So what we're doing is we're Robert Kirk, Kirkman in, you know, these things. So you get Invincible, the Walking Dead, things exactly. in, in that in that pattern. Exactly. <laughs> so you'll see some of the shows that are coming in comic form and you'll get to, you know, start in on their those universes. So the comics will start dropping right away uh, on the platform in January and hopefully um, some of our what's called local content. So our guy, Xavier Byers, shout out to him who from um, from KBS, who's an executive at Netflix right now. He's an advisor for us. And he he sat me down and he was like, Kevin, what we need to do is make sure that you have OTT content, which is the over the top streaming stuff with, that people focus really focus on. But because of the blurred community is what you what you want to engage. You need, to, you need to sow into the blurred community with what's called local content. So local content is more of what you guys do. You guys are a part of our local content strategy, Blurred, uh, Blurred's Eye View, where you're doing news, you're doing interest, you're, you're producing things that are almost extant right away, you know, live streaming, that kind of stuff. So I sat out with, uh, with Demetrius Holt, and he and I were discussing it. He came up with a show that is just a crazy, it's called Issue Number One. So issue number one, which is one of the shows we want to launch right away, is it takes into account the, the creator community in the comic space. What is issue number one that they have to experience, that they experience in terms of the barriers that keep them from doing their first issue? Well, it's money generally. It's generally money. So what we want to do with issue number one is we want to give them those dollars and then watch, go along with them while they're publishing their first issue, their issue number one. So we want to replace Kickstarter and then we're going to follow them along as they're building their first issue where, and, and that's local content. And then we'll option that issue or that, that content, that content will option it. It will be on Blur Station. We'll option the actual um, show concept or, or the comic concept and we'll make it into potentially an animated or live action show as well. But we're going to do that for four different creators of comics and give them an opportunity to have their, their comics done. And we watch them do it. You know, watch the ups, watch the downs, uh, the challenges that come with the deadlines that we will set, those kinds of things. So that's one of the shows that we anticipate being on there too, Lady Mandamore. So it'll be, it'll be some of that stuff while we're working towards the animated properties, which will take a little bit longer because they're animated. And that takes for animation is the devil, but it's mm -hmm. lovely when it's done. It is true. <laughs> so, Kaz, Kaz Famous, the musical, has a question. Interesting uh, kind of ideas. Issue one sounds dope. How does one submit their material to Blurred Station? Um, so, first things first. Um, don't come to the cookout and just bring Tupperware. Mm -hmm. Okay? Don't if, do that. If, if, if you know, you know. Exactly. <laughs> If you want to, if you want the, if you want to take a plate home with you, <laughs> then you need to bring a dish, mm -hmm. right? Ice don't plain, count. Plain and simple. Ice, huh? ice, paper plates, napkins, and that <laughs> stuff that don't count. We need something of substance. If you want the community to bless you, then you got to be a blessing to the community, mm -hmm. right? If, we, if we're going to stay with it, you got to, you got to sow into the community. So that's the first thing that we're asking is we're not taking pitches from projects that are not for, uh, for creators who are not in the community. We're taking care of our own first. So, and what, when, when I said that to Chris Fury and he said that to Blurred's Eye View, they were like, okay, sure. Dope. And they all moved. They all just jumped. They jumped in with us. Mm -hmm. So now they're at the front of the line. Now they have their own space. They have their own show. They are, and that's what we promise to do. We literally promise to reward leaps of faith any way we possibly can. So take the leap of faith with us, jump in, and then for then we'll, what we'll do is we'll make you know make it apparent who you need to start talking to.
to take pitches. So for issue number one, you're gonna to wanna to reach out to uh, uh, to Chauncey at uh, Blurred's Eye, excuse me, at um, I Speak Geek, or Do You Speak Geek? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you want, because Chauncey's gonna be one of the producers. And so Chauncey's starting to, uh, he's literally starting to organize that. Um, if it is for, for something else, once you join, then you'll have access to us and we'll start setting you up. We'll start looking at, at your stuff and let you know when we're gonna be taking pitches specifically. Tell people how they can join up the Blur Station. Let's start there. Yeah, so www.blurstation.com. You want to go there. Lots of information there. I mean, I know that this seems like it's really complicated. It's really not complicated. It's not all that complicated. It's a lot of moving parts because we're doing a lot of things. Go there. You can select from any, hit the join button. Once you're, once you're happy about what you see, hit the join button. You'll be able to select from any number of uh, affiliates who are, actually asking their uh, subscribers and asking their followers to come aboard uh, under them. And they will, you know, some are giving away some extra special stuff on top of what they get from Blurt Station. Some affiliates are doing that. Some, some are just saying, you know, come and join the party with us, you know, but if you, you want to do that, then you can fill it out, fill out the little form. It's a really a quick little form. Uh, we'll start sending you stuff and uh, 1099 a month for 36 months gets you your full your full formed affinity membership affinity this us together it's our space it's our thing it's uh, it's what binds us together it's like the force yes and uh then after we get those subscribers in place uh what what ultimately happens is we move from round one into uh, pre-production. Uh, and that's when we start opening up the doors for a lot more in terms of pitching, uh, concepts. We'll start showing up more at the black conventions. You know, when you've got, you know, blurred and powerful on, on your team, black conventions are a thing for us. That's going to absolutely be a thing for us. We want them to thrive. So we're going to be doing a lot of pitching for our shows, uh, or taking pitches at the black conventions. Um, same with um, Blurred's Eye View. Blurred's Eye View and Chris Fury and that, that crew are, is going to be helping us cultivate our voice actors. So that's going to be something that, you know, if you want to be a voice actor on some of our animated properties, which we've got some of them lined up, you're going to want to talk to Chris Fury and uh, Blurred's Eye View, and they're going to be able to direct you into that space. But just go. Uh, and, you know, again, it's a lot of information. It seems like scroll down to where the membership information is the entire presentation is right there you can download it and look it over and it has the whole strategy our strategy will work we just need people to lock shields with us like the spartans lock shields you know <laughs> you can mess some stuff up if you lock them shields up you know here, what I'm here's, here's, oh. that. here's that this is all you do this is all you do you go to blurstation.com if you can hear me <laughs> um, yes you go, you mm-hmm. go to now and see you see all of us there you mess up there now you can just go to blurred's eye view you can pick any of them and you just select because guess what the entire crew was there hey so you can pick as any yeah. of us mm-hmm. so yeah. you just go pick it pick any of the crew join up and uh not only that that's not only is that the best part of it the the really the 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 icing on the cake the the cherry on top after you pay your 1099 throughout the 36 months you own a piece you own a piece mm-hmm. you own a piece so you those other streaming services cannot offer you that yeah and it's running out honestly cuz it's yeah. only a certain number that we're going to give that affinity membership equity to you know so at some point we're, we're closing the doors on equity because we have to. There's only so many, only so many spots. I mean, spot. go, get off your ass and go over there. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> and please. they're running out. If, if y'all could please, please. If the only thing that's going to only grow in wealth. <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm begging y'all, please get, get some money and get some money. That's it. That's all. You're not asking for a lot. We're not asking. We're not asking. We're not. We're not asking for your check. We're just merely asking for the fourteen piece. We're asking for a number seven. Oh, you're we're asking for a Rudy Tootie fresh and fruity. That's all we're asking for. I was gonna say you can get a Big Mac meal. 
and have change left over to just. So that's, I mean, I mean you it's, can still go to Denny's after this. That's all we say. That's facts. It's true. It's true. And uh, this is where you buy in. This is where you buy in. Take the leap of faith. Jump in there with us because the, the thing that we don't want is we don't want this opportunity to go away. Right. Yeah. You know, we just don't. We don't want that. But you you jump in. If these guys, when you jump in, we will deliver. We promise that. Mm-hmm. We will deliver. Just, I've been paying for Netflix since they sent out DVDs. Nothing to show for it. Hey. Unless you kept <laughs> unless you kept said see, they say, unless you kept said DVDs. You sit back empty envelopes. But mm-hmm. I gladly paid for Justice League, uh the animated series. I, I kept it. I'm not gonna lie. I consciously <laughs> kept that on purpose. I was like, I'll pay for it. Screw it. I'm about to say, um, you pay for it. Uh, yeah. uh, so Trey Lawson says, How does equity work for a regular member? Uh, so equity works for a re- regular member. What we're doing is we're going to be putting uh, 10% of the company uh, and dividing that 10% of the company with the affinity members. So they'll get their share of 10% of the company. Now, unlike uh, what you'll find in a number of equity scenarios, i.e. our comps, what we have which is like fan base and uh, Legion M. Look those guys up. Look up Legion yeah. M in particular. They're very much a comp for us. Um they started with zero and you know their reputations no content no nothing and then forty thousand uh, equity members later they've got themselves a full-blown film company you know and they've been doing it for a number of years now and that's our comp however for our affinity members we won't do them the way legion m does legion m doesn't pay any dividends legion m all of the gains for their equity members are what are called paper gains. That means that the stock gets more and more valuable, but it's only on paper because they don't give any dividends or awards out to their stockholders. The only time they'll get anything, it's it's generally the case in these kind of of equity kind of like builds is if you get acquired, let's say say BET says, that's enough of that young Negroes, we're gonna give you $2 billion and we're gonna acquire you. Then you get your piece of the puzzle. You get your on the way out the door. Or if you go um, public, you go public and now um, it's the company's worth billions of dollars and then your, your stock matures in that way. But those are options for us. But we also know that if we just keep growing, we can give dividends on the stock that we have. We can actually pay you, the stockholder, a portion of, our, of the profits of the company into perpetuity. So as long as we're growing, you don't have to sell your stock to start making some money with us in our model. We get to our, we hit our benchmarks, then we start paying dividends to the stockholders. So then you can hold, you can hold on to it. And if we hit our top benchmarks, then you're make, you're actually making some good money holding on to the stock. So I hope that answers y'all's questions. Uh, so this next piece, we're getting into our news bites uh, to answer my very own assassin's question he says uh we got to stop confessing crime conf- confessing crimes on the show it's not a crime if i paid for it no <laughs> I, I responded that the, the statute of limitations has passed for me that, that, and that too they they don't care there's no more oh. red boxes and then so, so i it's i own it by outright i mean I, uh, i'm not knocking on my door anytime soon yeah i don't know what no anybody's talking about door. i don't see anybody too large for that <laughs> anyway, I was gonna say they're scared to even be on his doorstep, but you know that's it.